is the pineal gland for everybody? Is the opening of the third eye for everybody or is it only for specific people who are like gurus or enlightened masters? Well, I face this count question from many people who think that opening of the pineal gland is only for a few specific special people. Now I ask them, who are these special people? What do they have? What makes them special and qualified to open the pineal gland and not the rest? Let me explain. I think it is for everybody and I think it's an essential. It needs to be an essential part of everybody's curriculum at school, if you ask me. Why? See, 70,000 years ago, Mankind lived just like the animal. Then something happened that unleashed the power of their imagination. They learned to talk. This expresses, this is a line from Pink Floyd's album Division Bell, but this expresses in a short thing what it meant when mankind was, let's say, a hunter, much before a hunter-gatherer. He just lived like an animal because he did not know, he had a sense, he was not aware, he was in a different field of consciousness, he was not aware that this sense, the sense of speech can be used, the tongue can be used for speech. He did not know that. Since he did not know, he lived like an animal. But one day, the field of consciousness just escalated, step up in our evolution, when we realized, aha, we have this tongue and that can be used to communicate, make stories, build gossip, to uh, share knowledge, information, transmit information. And then suddenly humankind raised up from this stage of consciousness to another stage. There was an evolutionary jump. Likewise, I think today humankind is moving towards or evolving into a new species. Now, all this while we were not aware that we have another sense, a sixth sense. We have only thought we have these five senses to navigate in the physical space. The sense of touch, the sense of smell, the sense of sight. The senses necessary to navigate in this physical space. And we thought, and the extra thing is just our mind that gives us logic or reasons out things and uh, etc. But today, we are this verge, this conscious evolution concept that the world is changing rapidly and we are at this space where we are going into the next step in our evolution. Homo sapiens are evolving into a new species and I call it Homo celestial, celestial beings. Right? Now this evolution is not triggered by physical evolutionary changes. It is only with a realization, an awakening of some sort, which is the spiritual awakening that is happening all around us. An awakening, a realization that we have another sense. Aha! A sense which we call the inner sense. A sense of the other dimension, beyond the physical dimensions. A sense a gland, the spirit gland that is, helps us connect with the spiritual realm or the realm beyond the physical, right? The very idea of spirituality is the idea that we have begun to become aware of the fact that we are not just a body and a mind, but we are also a spirit. But the very spiritual revolution right now is the idea that we are beginning to become aware that we are a spirit and hence we are seeing the world not just as a physical body and a physical mind, but also as a spirit. That changes our entire perspective of things. Because the spirit is not from this dimension, like a body or mind. It is not from the three dimensions. So to this is the sense organ of the spirit. The pineal gland is a sense organ of the spirit. Right? Exactly what happens when we meditate, when we close our eyes, we find ourselves transported to another space, a space of another intelligence, another space altogether. 
And that is because we shut down our senses, physical senses, and give space for our inner sense to prevail, to express itself, to be. So just being, closing our eyes, being in the moment, just forgetting a mind, leaving a mind out of the picture. Our sense organs, uh, we're not communicating with uh, things from other, uh, you know, we're not receiving stimuli, we're not giving out information. We're just shutting ourselves and closing our eyes. And what happens in this space? In this space, our third eye opens. Our sixth sense is awake because all our five senses are dormant. Right? So, coming back to the point of, is the pineal gland activation for everybody? The third eye opening for everybody. In today's world, yes, it is for everybody because mankind is equipped and we are in this space where we need to, in fact, it's become a necessity, right? So if you were to tell me it is only for special people, I would just say it is, it is stupid to think that way, really. It is just another sense. It is a sixth sense. So if you open it, if you activate that, it just is a realization. It's nothing that you get from outside. It is already a sense you have, like the sense of speech. Just when you are aware, when you are aware you have this and learn how to use it, your experience of this reality becomes completely different. Your perceptions become very different. Your point of view changes. Your perceptions change and your reality changes. It's like this. Think of it like this. You have two eyes to navigate the physical space. Supposing you are in a traffic jam, sitting in a traffic jam, and you're frustrated because you can't see beyond what you can see from your physical eyes. You don't know when the traffic is going to clear, at what point it will clear. You don't know uh, what is happening on the other side, etc. Now, if you have another eye, which is up there, like an eagle soaring up, and can see the field, the whole thing, then your, your reaction to the traffic jam is going to be completely different because now you are in awareness. Now you know when things are going to be in the clear. You know what is happening ahead. You know that the boss that is waiting for you in the office is actually not come to the office or busy or whatever it is, you know. And since because awareness, when you are aware, things just change right your perspective changes it's like you're climbing a mountain and then you look from below the mountain you're looking at the peak you can only see so much you can't see from up above and you think the path above is a straight line because this is what your logic tells you that you need to go straight that's the most efficient way to reach up but if you have your eye up there, your third eye, which is not from this dimension and hence is not limited by space and time and you have it up there and it is telling you as an instinct, as an intuition, it's telling you don't go up straight, actually go around and then go up, okay, so and then you will reach the top easier, right? So a different perspective and you have a completely higher perspective, it changes your point of view, it changes your actions, it changes your reactions. It's like knowing the truth, it's like knowing the purpose of your life, it's like uh, it, it is a very rich, it is, your life is suddenly opened up to a whole lot of possibilities when you have this gland active, when you have this sense active and keen. Um, so, so if you were to ask me, is this third eye thing uh, open for everybody? Does everybody need to experience this? I would say, hell yes. Today it is a necessity that we become aware of the idea that we have another sense, an inner sense, an intuition, a capability of intuition, a capability of clairvoyance, a capability of other dimensional access to the other dimensions and then we become a multi-dimensional being easily able to navigate in this life easily able to navigate this world as a spirit as well as much as a body and as much as a mind what are the dangers of activating the pineal gland or opening the third eye well 
there are a few dangers of activating the third eye without proper guidance or supervision. The first danger is that <clears throat> we could perhaps become unhinged from our physical reality. That means a non-alignment or disconnection from the physical reality. Okay, what I mean is this. Now, we have these seven centers of expression or our seven energy meridians or chakra points. Uh, we know them, the seven chakra points now. When we exist, it is best to exist in a balanced in a balanced way in a uh, when we have all our energy meridians expressed in a balanced manner in an aligned and balanced manner for example if we were to give undue emphasis on opening a third eye when we are not when our energy is not really balanced at the lower uh, part of our uh, chakras then what happens is we create an unnecessary imbalance right so the consequence of this could be that a person you see we have lower chakras and we have higher chakras so if we just lay emphasis on one of our higher chakras and low energy in our other chakras you know at the cost of the other chakras then we might become too focused in our life on on fulfilling the needs of this chakra and forget the needs of the other chakras for example uh, you could just uh, forget about uh, you the things you need to do for your survival you might just forget about having the right nourishment you might just forget about wearing you know clean clothes your hygiene you might just forget about um, your relationships in this physical world and maybe just you will take off to the Himalayas to meditate and just connect with the divine and forget about the rest of the physical reality that you are meant to be in so this is one of the dangers of an imbalanced expression in any of our chakra points so it is not just applicable for your pineal gland or your agnya chakra it is also applicable for all of our chakras it is simply like this if a human being, if I were to exercise way too much on only one part of my body, that is my arms, if I were to only work out my arms and ignore the rest of my body, what will happen is that I will have exaggerated arms, really big strong arms and very weak back, very weak abdomen, which will just be not a sustainable action for me to do. So, one of the dangers of Focusing way too much on opening of the third eye and forgetting to balance yourself is that one might get unhinged and disconnected from a physical reality. Like a schizophrenic person, for example, a mental Ill, mentally ill person, a schizophrenic, who perhaps would see visions and hear things from other dimensions, but it is non-related and not connected to his experience in the physical dimension. There's a disconnect. So hence, people look at him as a person who is mad, not connected to the physical world. So, you know, when we are not in alignment, when our upper chakras, higher chakras are not in alignment with the lower chakras, this is the danger of unnecessarily focusing on opening a pineal gland or a agna chakra while ignoring a lower uh, uh, chakras. This is one of the dangers. The second danger is that uh, we might encounter entities, messages, visions that can be scary, that can be from the dark spaces. See, the pineal gland or the Agni chakra or the spirit gland is like an antenna, a receiver and a transmitter to other dimensional realms. Now, we have antennas, our, our sense organs, like our sense of touch, our sense of sight, our sense of hearing, our sense of speech, are all senses, or antennas to communicate with this physical world, right? When we receive information, transmit information from our organs, sense organs. Now, the Agnya Chakra is a sense organ, 
as for the sixth sense, a sense beyond our physical senses. This helps us in connecting with a dimension beyond the three dimensions. It's beyond the three dimensions. So when we open this channel of communication to the other realms without proper guidance, then the dangers, without protecting yourself, and the danger is that we might invite information, entities, energies that start to communicate to you which might just want to cause you mischief and you might not know how to protect yourself. It is exactly like this when uh, a child who does not know how to ride a bicycle wants to, uh, without proper guidance, starts to do things on his own. The danger, it's not necessary, but the danger that he might hurt himself is very real. Without knowing the traffic rules, he, if, he is bit, if he is put on the road, then he could get into an accident. It could be fatal. So, similarly, when we start to have, take baby steps into navigating in the multi-dimensional space, not the three-dimensional space, without training, without guidance, without knowing the traffic rules there, without knowing guidelines, then we could just falter around, fall about, hurt ourselves, exactly like that. We might just do things in a manner that might be irresponsible when we start to navigate in the three dimension beyond the three dimensional space so when we initiate ourselves into activating a pineal gland it is best for you to have proper guidance proper understanding our master who is going to help you to protect you from all these negative entities negative uh, energies to guide you to give you the right guidelines to help you keep a balanced expression and, and then you open your third eye so, to, in effect, yes, there are some dangers to opening, irresponsibly opening your third eye. But if you were to do it with proper guidance and understanding, then this is one of the most beautiful and the most amazing things that can happen in your life experience. It will just take you into another space of experiencing the richness of what uh, living life is. Uh, this is necessary for everybody, but it needs to be done with proper guidance. So, <clears throat> Does the pineal gland or the third eye, the concept of opening it, take you into a very dark space? Does it come from darkness or does it come from light? I have heard people who express a lot of fear in terms of uh, opening of the third eye. They think that it comes from a very dark energy, a dark place of the universe. I have heard Christians talk about the third eye uh, in the same breath as talking about the Antichrist. I have heard uh, Muslims talk, speak of it saying it's the one-eyed being or the Dajjal which is uh, the entity that's supposed to signify the end of this world. I have heard uh, people speak about it being a part of secret, uh, dark secret, evil secret societies like the Illuminati etc. But I've also heard at the same breath these things. For example, when you speak of the pineal gland, you find the pineal gland to be a major part of the symbology in Christianity. When we think of the Vatican, when we think of the Pope, the staff of the Pope has a prominent pine cone. Pine cone, uh, the symbol in symbology, the pine cone has always been used by multiple civilizations. For example, the Greeks, the Egyptians in their hieroglyphics have depicted the pine cone uh, in synonymous with the pineal gland because the pineal gland is in the shape of a pine cone. So when you look at symbology of the Vatican, you have these huge pine cones at the entry point of the Vatican. You have the pine cone and the staff of uh, the Pope. You, uh, Jesus is always seen as light shining out of this point from his forehead, you know like the third eye. It's also mentioned, I 
cannot give you references exactly, but I have heard this and I'm sure you will find this reference of it referenced as when he closed his eyes and saw uh, something with eyes closed. So that refers to the pineal gland. So in Christianity, there is one group which speaks of it as the Antichrist. There's another group which speaks of it as coming of light, from the source of light. In Islam, if you look at a devout Muslim who has dedicated his time and his life towards remembrance of the Lord, uh, Allah, when he is bowed down in prostration to the Lord, uh, when a person who is uh, a practicing Muslim who is praying five times a day, you look at him, he has a dark spot right here on his forehead, signifying again the idea of the pineal gland. Every motion of him bending down in salutation again is stimulating this sense, the pineal gland, giving him the ability to see beyond, have faith. The very idea of faith is see beyond what your physical senses uh, can uh, gather and know beyond what your physical senses can see and have faith in something that is not seen from these two eyes. So in Muslims too, uh, in Islam too, you have devout Muslims with a mark out here signifying the pineal gland. In Hindus, we have women who wear the bindi or when you go to a temple, you wear a vermilion tikka uh, right on your forehead signifying the pineal gland. Now, <clears throat> so you can see that there is one group of people who think of the pineal gland as coming from the dark, the antichrist and the dajjal. There is another group that thinks of the pineal gland as coming from the source of light. So, to answer your question, it is very simple. Like everything else, now we have a sense of speech, or we have speech is one of the faculties that we have. Now speech can also be used to cause damage, to, to, uh, to carry gossip, to speak evil. Or the sense of speech can also be used to create marvels, to heal people, to, uh, to say good words, kind words. Our eyes can be used for dark. So when I have people, uh, when I do these retreats on pineal gland activation, I have these people who are very curious and keep asking me over and over again. Will I open my third eye in this retreat? A retreat for let's say a weekend, a week or 10 days or 15 days or a month. So in this short span of time, will I be open to really, will I open my third eye? The answer is very simple, yes, and the answer is also maybe, the answer is also no. I'll tell you, I'll explain this to you why. See, in our present civilization, the pineal gland for one, let's understand this, the pineal gland or the third eye or the Agnya Chakra is just another gland in a body like the thyroid gland, like the adrenaline gland, like the thymus, etc., etc. Now, the problem with this particular gland is that this gland has been, let's say, you know, underdeveloped in almost everybody in our current civilization. Underdeveloped and also atrophied. Atrophied. When we don't use something, it becomes, it becomes smaller, it becomes shrinks. Like we don't use our arms, the shrinks become smaller and smaller and weaker. Exactly like that our pineal gland has also become weaker and not just weaker it has calcified it has become hardened why because of two factors one is our physical environment as our civilization has progressed we have created these conditions we have integrated certain things into our ecosystem that are really harmful to our pineal gland in specific. Our water is heavily fluorinated. Uh, we use fluoride in our toothpaste. We have uh, pesticides, a uh, huge amount of pesticides in our uh, food. We have uh, in our soil there is uh, fertilizers which are made of chemicals which don't really serve us. Uh, we use a whole lot of aluminum in our packaging. We use a whole lot of sodium in our uh, preservatives in our food. So everything we are consuming, our environment is polluted by uh, uh, 
uh, fumes of uh, you know uh, vehicle pollution everything is so polluted that when you dissect a human being a boy who is 12 years of age or more you will find that the pineal gland is hardened it is meant to be soft but it has become hard because of our consumption patterns very few really are immune to this because it's so prevalent our soil is degraded our food is different our water sources are different so everything is in that space so so almost everybody unless who is really really far away living in the himalayas or a source of water which is pure coming from straight from the mountains are uh, making his own organic food and living in a very different organic lifestyle everybody's pineal gland has become hard now to to decalcify it there are certain steps one needs to take okay number 2 as a functional part of our being the pineal gland helps us to see visions right but in our civilization no importance has been given to things like our imagination things like visions that we see i remember as a child if i were to just sit do nothing and just daydream just look up into the sky uh, or you know with eyes closed or eyes open people would just tell me why are you wasting your time because it was seen as a non productive part of my life just spending away time just imagining or being in this realm of imagination or lucid dreaming or dreams this is not given any importance so since it's not been given any importance we have not used this part of our function functioning part of our you know being since we have not used it it is like i told you if we don't use our arm for for let's say a decade what will happen it will become very small very weak like that a pineal gland is also very weak it needs some stimulation so when you come to a retreat or a boot camp what happens is that in these few days you are pushed to the limit your pineal gland is pushed to the limit physically and otherwise stim to, to given too much stimulation so that it wakes up it starts to do its function it's like you're going to a boot camp to let's say strengthen yourself up become a strong person uh, so you go to the boot camp in the boot camp will you become strong the answer is yes and no yes you are pushed to the limit you will start to have feel pain but the point is that you integrate the practices and habits in as into habits in when you go away from your boot camp but in your boot camp you learn you get to get an idea of what it feels like to have a strong body to have a strong uh, uh, more endurance etc exactly like that this retreat is going to be like a boot camp for your pineal gland where it's pushed where it's uh, cajoled where it's uh, stimulated where it's uh, uh, you know uh, awakened where it's kicked and activated so you will find an experience of what it feels like to have a third eye open or your pineal gland active but it will take you dedicated effort and practice consistent practice for you to take back all the things you've learned in the boot camp take back and practices meditations breath work uh, many other things that you take back from here and practice it on a day to day basis the more you do it the more stronger will your ability or your sixth sense become the more prominent your pineal gland will be the more functioning it will be so the question the answer uh, is that uh, yes for sure you will have an experience something that you have never experienced in your life before an opening of the pineal gland you have never experienced in your life before an access to the other dimension like you have never experienced before but for you to really reach up to the sky or to really be up there you need to go back and take these practices that are taught here and make it in the part of your life and then as time goes by you will become a more sustainable consistent uh, uh, faculty of yours which is going to be the faculty of the sixth sense being really active and a part of your uh, being